In this lesson, you will learn different methods of collecting data and how you can infer information from sample data. Let's start with a problem. Sam wants to collect data about favorite fast food restaurants in his area. Which method would be the best way to collect this data? So again, we're looking at the best way to collect data about the favorite fast food restaurants in his neighborhood. So what Sam is going to do is he's going to go around to different sources and collect this data. The sources that you collect data from is called a population. In this case, the people living in Sam's neighborhood is the target population. Now, a population in general can have too many sources. What if Sam's town is really large? So Sam can't possibly interview all the people. But to perform a survey, he can just take a sample from the population. Now, the best way to collect data is to use a random sampling where you select people at random from the population so you get data from all types of sources in the neighborhood. Now this makes the data unbiased and reliable and representative of the entire population. Now in some cases people might collect sample data from a limited source which can be biased or representative of only part of the population and not the entire population. So let's take a look at the different methods that I have here listed as A, B, and C, and we'll see if some are biased or if some are unbiased and which one might be better than another. Let's look at the first one. And the first one here says that he's going to survey people in the neighborhood at random, say from every third house. Now this is a random sampling, okay, and it, it says so in in the description. But it's random because if he just goes around to every third house, he, he will span a large area across the neighborhood. Also, such a sample will not be affected by choices because you cannot conclude that people in every third house may like pizza more than every fourth house, for example. So this is this is pretty unbiased as well in that regard because there's no necessary pattern for the number of houses or the number of the house and what they prefer in terms of fast food. So this is random and relatively unbiased. Now let's take a look at this option here. What if he asks people leaving a particular restaurant? Well, they're already leaving a particular restaurant and you can then assume that they probably like that restaurant. So this becomes a biased sample. Now it could also be biased in the other direction. Maybe they went to this restaurant and they didn't like it. So now they're more likely to say, no, this isn't what I like. But if a person's le leaving a pizza place, they probably like pizza. So it won't represent the best choices of the entire neighborhood to survey people leaving a particular restaurant. Now let's take a look at this last one. Here, he says he's going to ask people who live within one block of his house. Now this is not representative of the entire neighborhood because it's only one area. People living in a certain area may like one restaurant or type of food more than others just because it's closer. So this means that the best method for Sam to get unbiased and representative data is option A. So he should survey people in the neighborhood at random from every third house. Now let's take a look at the data that Sam collects and then we'll make some inferences about the favorite restaurants in his neighborhood. So this is the data that Sam collects. What can you say about this data? Looking at the numbers, you can see that most people in Sam's sample like pizza. And you can tell that because the greatest number of people say that pizza is their favorite type of fast food. Also, the least number of people like tacos, as you see here with number 10. And you can infer that the least number of people in the neighborhood like tacos. The number of people who like hamburgers is about half the number of people who like pizza, right? Because if you had 18, 18 times 2 would be 36, which is roughly half of the number who like pizza. And this is almost twice as many people as the number who like tacos, right? Because 10 times 2 would be 20, and 18 is right around 20. So you can infer that for the entire neighborhood, the number of people who like hamburgers is between those who like tacos or pizza. In this lesson, you've learned about different ways of collecting sample data, and you've also learned how to make some inferences based on data that is collected. Happy solving!